Hello folks, coming up next is something interesting. I'm a dad who quit his job 5 years ago to make board games with my wife. We have now sold over 2 million dollars in games. Ask me anything. Is the transition from being employed to self-employed hard? It's definitely a shift, but it felt less strange than we expected. When we launched our first game we still had our day jobs. Because it did so well, it raised $100,000 on Kickstarter, we had a bit of a cushion of time to quit our jobs and try to make a second successful game and build up the sales of the first. So we were in a good place to leave. My suggestion would be to make something great on the side, release it on a website or somewhere like Kickstarter, and then transition over as it begins to do better. The transition time will be busy, doing both at the same time, but I think that's the safest way to do it. Are you accepting game designs? I'm interested in moving into the field as you did, and already have a handful. If you have any suggestions on how to move forward with designing and development, I'd love to hear more. If you're hiring, I also bake really well. LOL. Yes. We're always willing to hear what game ideas people have, and if it feels like a good fit then we would move forward with it and share royalties. Haha, <laughs> we may take you up on the baking thing. Here is some more info about the types of designs we look for specifically. I have read that the board game industry is dominated by a select number of competitors and had razor tight margins. How has your experience been with this and how have you targeted your marketing? There are definitely some big guys out there, but there are a lot of smaller guys who make up a big chunk of the industry. Many of the smaller guys don't end up making a lot of money or making more than a couple games, but there are quite a few that make it out and are able to grow a small team and release one to two games per year and make a career out of it. The key is to be different. We have tried to have unique packaging, book boxes, unique components, unique attributes to the game, higher player counts and social deduction mixed with strategy, that helps us be seen and sell a lot of games. Margins are tight if you sell primarily through distribution and retailers, but they aren't so bad if you do direct sales, sales through Kickstarter, or sales through Amazon. We focused on those aspects. What are your favorite games that are made by other companies? One of my favorites is Ticket to Ride. It is very simple to learn and play, it provides interesting decisions, and it ties in the theme, trains and travel, really well with the game. Lots of fun. How did you come up with Cones of Dunshire? If I had a dollar for every time someone compared me to Ben Wyatt, then I would have significantly more dollars. But honestly the comparison is fair. I think about how to invent games on a daily basis, I married a girl from Indiana, and I even made one of our early Kickstarter videos using stop motion and compared it to Avatar. I backed your last Kickstarter and backed this one a week or so ago. I had no idea from reading the original post what it is, and I was pretty surprised when I clicked on it and it was Bristol. I have to confess I haven't played the first one yet, even though I own it, mostly because of a lack of time, but, it's an awesome format. What made you decide to make them look like books, it is a cool idea? Good question. There are so many games out there, 1000 plus released every year, and it keeps growing. So we knew we needed our games to stand out in any way we could. We were walking through a craft store and saw a faux book on the shelf and fell in love with the idea. Books are magical to a lot of people, and we wanted to bring that feel to people as they opened it up and saw a game. We also like that you can display it on a bookshelf instead of a game closet, because most people's game closets are the messiest places in their house. How much of that money have you seen personally? Around half of our revenue goes towards manufacturing the game, shipping the game, across the ocean in boats, and to individuals through the mail, and other overhead, like working with an accountant, managing our website, paying cuts to distributors and retailers. The other half goes towards our living expenses, since this is our full-time job, and towards development of new games, paying for art, prototypes, etc. What was the most difficult part of the production process for your first game? How easy was finding vendors to produce the parts slash pieces for your game? For the first game, most difficult was figuring out the best way to do shipping and the best way to work with manufacturers. To help answer some of these questions I went to a local game convention and talked to a lot of game makers who were a few years ahead of me. The community is super helpful in pointing new creators in the right directions in terms of manufacturing, logistics, etc. I always tell people that the game community is so helpful because if someone buys my competitor's game, they are actually then more likely to buy my game. Games turn people into gamers and then they buy more and more games. 
Are you like a rich person? A lot of the money we make goes back into the company or we save it away. We live in a normal house, only have one car, etc. I think part of the nature of self-employment is uncertainty, so we save slash invest as much as we can while things are good. Hopefully they stay good for a long time, but we're not going to throw away money to be rich in the meantime. What's your process for creating a game? Our basic process of making a game, come up with an initial idea for a game, based on history, travel, other games, books, everyday habits, etc. Make an ugly prototype, test 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 and keep updating and printing out new ugly prototypes, give the game a theme, find an illustrator to work with, find a graphic designer to work with, in my case it is my wife, make a pretty prototype, contact a factory, we make our games in China, build a Kickstarter page that shows the pretty prototype, manufacture the game, freight the games from the factory to the fulfillment center, send out the game to Kickstarter backers, start selling the game in places like Amazon, talk with distributors and get the game sold in stores. That's the nutshell version. It's a lot of work and a lot of steps, but we really enjoy it. What would you say is the best approach for somebody who would like to have a go at designing and publishing a game with minimal personal risk financially? The best way to do that would be to design slash invent the game and then pitch it to a publisher to actually manufacture it. If it flops, you're out nothing. If it succeeds, you'll get royalties. You won't make a ton through royalties, and it's hard to get a publisher on board, but it's possible. This is so cool. My question would be, how challenging is it to make a game balanced and fair from scratch? It's impossible to make it fair slash balanced right away. It requires so much testing. Our games literally go through 100 plus versions and 500 plus tests before everything is balanced and just right. We scrap so many ideas and throw so many pretty good games out the window if they can't make it past the final hurdle of being balanced and fun. I'm assuming that the $2 million number is gross sales. Of that how much are you keeping? Put another way, what's the profit margin on games? Around half of our revenue goes towards manufacturing the game, shipping the game, across the ocean in boats, and to individuals through the mail, and other overhead, like working with an accountant, managing our website, paying cuts to distributors and retailers. The other half goes towards our living expenses, since this is our full-time job, and towards development of new games, paying for art, prototypes, etc. What board game are you most proud of? I know it's cliche, but it's like asking which of our kids is our favorite. We love each in different ways, and we spent so much time and love developing them, so it's hard to pick. I'll always love my first because it was my first, Salem. I love the look of my second, Tortuga. I like playing my third, Deadwood. I love my fourth for big groups, trophies, and I love my fifth for the way it brings people into the story of the game, Bristol. Are you planning to release your games on any digital platform? Yes, little by little we're working towards that. One of our games is being turned into an app. And all of them can be played online on a site called Tabletop Simulator that essentially makes a 3D table and board that you can play on. Our main focus will always be the physical games though. Something about touching the pieces and seeing people face to face. Did having a child help make the decision to switch from traditional work to a family business? When we made the switch we did not yet have kids, but it definitely would have played a factor. I think a lot of people worry about the health insurance aspect of it, but these days there are lots of good options for self-employed people to get it. Eventually self-employment can start to feel more traditional in senses like that, setting up insurance, setting up retirement plans, etc. So if you sold that many copies why are you kickstarting the next one? Don't you now have the money to not gamble with other people's money? Kickstarter is great for raising capital to pay for large print runs, we usually don't have 200k sitting around to make a big order like that. It is also invaluable for marketing, getting the word out about the game, generating feedback, so we can make changes before we actually publish, and for just having a great launch platform. There are companies way bigger than us that use Kickstarter for all their launches. It's a great platform with a great community. How did you settle on specific instances in history for your games? Will there be a modern take? P.S. Tortuga will forever be a favorite memory of my Geekway crew. We played it late at night, brain dead from learning too many games over the last few days and we just had a roaring good time. Between the betrayal and pirate talk we had an absolute blast. Thank you for the game and the memories. 
We have about 50 different potential theme ideas floating around. Some future ones we're highly considering are ancient Rome, Egypt slash mummies, samurai, ancient Americas, Roanoke, mobsters of Chicago. I'd also love to do a futuristic one. Present day might be too controversial no matter what we picked. Ha ha. So many to pick from. P.S. Glad you guys enjoyed Tortuga. That one can get crazy. What would have been your answer or question? Leave it in the comments below. Slap that like and subscribe button for more, and check out the link in the video description for even more answers. Peace out, and catch you in the next video.